to health. And speaking of health, you know, it seems like an image from a bygone era. A physician steps up to the front door, black bag in hand, to check up on a patient at home. But actually, the number of doctors who offer this type of personalized medical care is actually now on the upswing. At-home visits from the doctor remain rare for most Americans, but the service is becoming increasingly available to the elderly. Aaron Falo introduces us to a Hudson physician who's taking the road less traveled. What does it hurt? My ears. Your ears? Okay. And in my forehead. Pierre Dion is not your typical doctor. Oftentimes, to give his patients a checkup, he checks out of the office. This family physician takes his Hudson practice on the road to about 10 homes a week. He visits those who might otherwise not get the care they need. Hey, hey, Millie, I'm here. Today, he's paying a visit to one of his longtime patients in Nashua. Mildred just spent two months in the hospital after back surgery. Do you have pain there? No. That's sweet. All right. He really cemented me up then. Do you have any swelling? No, that's what I said. Everyone said, gee, Millie. Those are the best legs I've seen all day. Oh, boy. <laughs> As you can tell, these two go way back. You know what? You make a cannibal unhappy. A cannibal? <laughs> oh, Pierre. I'm telling you, you would. You don't Please. mind me calling you, Pierre. Uh, you know, Millie, everyone now says, you have called me that for 20 years. Well. Dr. Diane and Mildred have been through a lot together. First, there was the loss of her husband to lung disease and then her daughter's courageous battle with breast cancer. She said, Ma, I don't want to go to hospice house. I said, I told him. That's I said, I'll, when I said. I'm going to take care of you at home. In fact, when the ambulance crew brought Mildred's daughter Millie home to spend her final days and realized they couldn't get her up the narrow stairway to her apartment on the stretcher, in stepped Dr. Dion. I said, hey, Millie. Put your arms around my neck. We're going for a ride. It's so, she grabbed my neck. I picked her up, and she's giggling all the way up. And I couldn't stop laughing. And I says, Millie, stop laughing. I'm going to drop you. This is not going to look good, man. It's like, this is not going to look good. So I carried her up uh, three flights, or brought her into the door, put her in her uh, lounge chair there. Cat came uh, jumping into her legs there. She was crying, and uh, she was so happy to be there. He still keeps a picture of Millie with him today. Though it's all she knows, Mildred understands just how lucky she is to have a doctor willing to come to her. Everyone in here comes and say, how in the hell? Excuse me. I said, don't ask me. He said, I'll see you at the house. But that's the care that I have gotten. To this family practitioner, his patients are family. I'll see you. Oh, all right. Have a good day. He's following in his father's footsteps. Dr. Roger Dion has spent his career bringing medicine into people's homes and today heads up the senior center at St. Joseph's that's been named after him. While they're in the minority when it comes to doctors these days, Dr. Dion refuses to criticize others in his profession who strictly work out of the hospital or office. I can't really speak for them because they're, taking care of people in our society is a little risky. There's no question about it. But I, you know what's nice about it? It's kind of like old time medicine. I mean, you, when you knock on somebody's door and you've decided to take this giant step, all you have are your hands and your heart. You don't really have anything else. And when you walk through that door, you have no idea what you're gonna be called to do. He's picked up prescriptions, groceries for patients, and put up so many shower curtains that you'd think it was a side business. Good to see you. Let's go see, I wonder how Joe is today. Making rounds like this, he's seen his patients improve. It's amazing how when you walk through the door and you're with them, the quality of life goes up and their existence is just playing better. I mean, they, for whatever reason, um, things just go better. Hi, buddy. Ow. How are you doing? <laughs> Come on. You Those who work alongside him are constantly amazed by him. He often doesn't make a dime for calls like these, and it doesn't bother him a bit. His nurses say he puts the care in health care. He'll go all the way up north, up to the mountains and everything, on his day off to go see people. It's just really, he goes above and beyond. Give me a nice big breath, Joe. 
Gee, Joe, there's actually air in here. He's been a lifeline to those like Joe and Hudson, who's on oxygen and suffers from severe lung disease. His father was the best of the best at doctors, and he takes after his father. But no, I, I do love it. He comes over here sometimes just to say hi. How's the walking? My, my walking in here isn't bad, but it's just like my... Let's walk to that door. Finding enough breath to get around is often a struggle for Joe, so Dr. Dion comes here. Unlike other people he knows, Joe says he actually looks forward to seeing the doctor. He's not only my doctor, he's just my personal friend. You know, the patients that have a hard time coming to the, to the office, you know, sometimes they have to take an ambulance to come here, and he just thinks that's silly, you know. Dion's wife and kids have gone with him on house calls through the years. Stasha admires her husband for his dedication to his patients, but admits that there have been some sacrifices. Sometimes it cuts into the family time, like on Christmas morning when, you know, we want him home. Well, I gotta go see so-and-so. They invited me for breakfast and I go, what? <laughs> Still, she's seen the difference that he's making in his patients' lives. He loves going into the houses because the patients just love having him there. And so do their families. There aren't many doctors that are greeted with a hug. Dr. Dion travels all the way to Deerfield on a regular basis to check in with David, who's living with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Any problems at all? Nothing. Any, you how's, know, your, how's your breathing? My breathing, uh, you know, it, it's <clears throat> gradually decreasing, you know, like everything else. The neurodegenerative disease has left him unable to move one of his arms and both legs. You feel me touching you? Oh, I feel You're everything. Yeah. It, okay. it is a motor neuron thing. It is not a sensory neuron yeah, thing. just asking. The <laughs> sensory neuron thing. David says Dr. Dion has been a godsend. To get to his office and back the first time I went, he said, don't bother. I make rounds and I'll come and see you once in a while. It is an extraordinary everything doctors just right, don't make house calls right. anymore you get people that you get so close to you kind of reach a uh, <laughs> kind of special relationship and I'm not quite how to, to explain it but it's almost like touching their soul I mean you sit there and it's where treatment becomes almost like healing where you uh, not only you're treating their physical issues but you're actually healing their heart I'll talk to you soon and we'll get uh, what we need absolutely give me a hug. Okay.